Time to talk Florida State recruiting. Things have been quiet in Tallahassee during the bye week, but we're going to get it cranked up this weekend as FSU returns to Doak to take on Virginia Tech. And in this video, we're going to break down a very important official visitor. We're going to hit on a pair of top 2025 targets and check in on five-star commitment K.J. Bolden after that visit to Auburn last weekend. All right, but before we do that, FSU fans, smash that subscribe button. You guys have been following me for the last 12 years in this market, so you might as well follow along now on three recruits channels blowing up. Hit that subscribe button. All right, let's bring on my guy, Michael Langston from War Chant. Mike, from a recruit's perspective, what do you think the atmosphere is going to be like when this undefeated team takes the field on Saturday? I think it'll be very electric. Um, I was at the Southern Miss game, even when they played Southern Miss, and I wasn't used to that kind of because you usually see it's kind of it's it there's it's a crowd, but it's not like full and packed. Where the Southern Miss game was just standing room only, there was no room. I expect after this, you know, big Clemson win they got, undefeated team, the atmosphere is going to be pretty electric. Three thirty games. That's kind of. I guess the perfect time, as far as I'm concerned, as far as recruiting, you want guys in there at 3.30. It's not too early. It's not too late. You know, it's kind of the middle of the day, so uh, that's kind of perfect. So I think it's going to be pretty electric, with, uh, and they got some really good, uh, talented guys coming in. Yeah, that 3.30 spot is perfect for the old and washed crowd like ourselves. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the most important visitor of the weekend, the only official visitor of the weekend. That's five-star defensive lineman. LJ McRae out of Mainland High School. And this is a really important one, Mike, because this might be his last visit before he makes the decision. He said he's going to do it sometime in October. We think it could come in the next two to three weeks. So, Mike, what's your read on where things sit with LJ McRae heading into this one? Yeah, I think it's really close uh, with a lot of teams. I think uh, certainly – Auburn made a big impression when he vi officially visited there the last weekend. And then, you know, Miami's made a little bit of a push. And then Florida's always been, you know, the big team that we've heard that FSU feels like is the heaviest competition. Um, them struggling on the field makes you wonder kind of, you know, where, where that shakes down because product on the field is a big deal with LJ. But the thing that people seem to forget, too, on this recruitment is FSU was one of the first to – be involved with LJ from the start and that's really resonate him from the start. He hasn't forgot. That's why they got the last official visit because they were on him before. I think he had pretty much anybody. So that, that holds strong water with him, but also just the product on the field, what they do. Um, I think the big key, if I'm watching one thing this weekend is how he interacts with the players. Cause that's something yeah. he hasn't done. You know, he hasn't been around the players. He hasn't, got a feel around them he knows the feel around the other commits uh you know fsu that he knows they're committed to the program but i think uh, being around those players and my my takeaway from what he does with that and how that connects i think could go a long way to determining kind of the pecking order where this goes because it's i think it's really tight i don't think there i i i spent a lot of time with him on last thursday and i could tell it didn't seem like a kid that kind of knew what what he was going to do you know, it's kind of a kid that's kind of looking for something to spark to kind of make mm -hmm. him make his decision easier. And I think FSU certainly you know, has a big opportunity on the field, uh, both what their product is and to, you know, the way they can connect with him to show him that kind of spark that he's looking for. Yeah. You know, and it is interesting about FSU getting in on LJ McCray first, like you said, is he wasn't born a five-star. I mean, he's only been a five-star on on three for about two weeks, and I don't know if any other service has him rated that highly yet. It's yeah. kind of been the slow grind for LJ McCray of coming up. Uh, we've always been high on him, but he is a newly minted five-star and one of the best defensive linemen in America. That leads me to my next question. Is his teammate, Zay Mincy, who plays safety, also a priority recruit for Florida State? Is he going to be here this weekend, and where do you think FSU sits in his recruitment? Yeah, I think he's definitely a priority uh, to their to their plans as far as they want two DBs left in this class. I think one corner, one safety would be kind of a perfect scenario. What they want, they they're certainly recruiting him hard. Um, Zay's even told me that he's like, I've talked to a lot of schools, but he's like, I don't talk to him on the phone that much. So Zay's like, sometimes it's hard to reach me, but. Um, not just with FSU, but just any school in general. But yeah. I do think he'll be back on the FSU campus, just not this weekend. I think he's coming back for the FSU Miami game. I think certainly they're in the picture, but I think there's also work to do to catch up with teams. I think Miami and Florida are the teams that I hear. 
the most frequently him, mainly Florida, if I was picking a team. Uh, just he's been there so many times. The location's very suitable for him to get there pretty frequently. And, and I think he likes, uh, you know, the job that uh, what Corey Raymond's doing. So I think with FSU, he said something interesting when he visits. He's like, when I go there, I kind of I'm looking for a feeling of, you know, just some kind of feeling that is different. And, and so I think that's going to be their opportunity uh, to kind of show him something different that he hasn't seen on these other campus visits that – maybe makes FSU unique or something like that. So I think that's where they stand. If if they can do that, then it, it's going to get pretty interesting. But I think as of now, I think you know, there's work to do to catch up with Florida and Miami. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see what happens coming out of the weekend with the mainland high school boys. Well, mainly LJ McCray. Uh, but Mike, yeah. it's also time to focus on 2025. I know 2024 is not done yet, but looking across the country, I mean, most teams only have three or four spots to fill. So we're going to talk a little 2025, and there are two names on campus this weekend that Florida State fans, they better get to know. They're both out of the state of Alabama. The first one we're going to cover is Micah DeBose. He's a big-time offensive tackle, the 17th-ranked overall player in the class. Now he's committed to Georgia, but he's going to be there this weekend, and Alex Atkins already has his calls in on this one. Where do you think FSU sits, and what other competition is there? Because I know you know he's committed to Georgia, but I know other schools are coming after him. Yeah, I mean, Mike has been a guy that's visited FSU multiple times. He really likes Atkins, and you see the FSU develop with that offensive line, how he's just completely turned around kind of what their program was when he first started, which was one of the worst offensive lines in the country. And now, you know, he certainly made them in uh, development-wise, I think – Micah really connects with Alex. I think that's kind of why you see him so frequently on the FSU campus. I think they're very high on this list, even though he is committed to Georgia. I think there's something about Alex that connects with him from a personal level and from a development level. I would say, you know, teams like Auburn, I think uh, there's other teams like Ohio State that are certainly trying to get in, involved. Uh, but I would say if there's a team that's a threat to Georgia – it would definitely be it would definitely be Florida State because of that relationship and just what they're doing on the field, not just um, you know guys at his position, but when he looks at this offense line, I think he sees kind of a gradual, complete change of just every position on that line that really jumped out to him. And I think he also just likes kind of the blocking schemes of what they do and how they run their offense. Kind of fits kind of what he does in high school. So that's a lot of it. A lot of what you see uh, resonates with with mm -hmm. Micah, and that's why he keeps coming back there. Yeah, and hey, I mean Kirby might be getting sick of Florida State. Nobody recruits better than Georgia right now on the recruiting trail. But if there's a kryptonite for Georgia, it's Florida State right now. I mean, they flip Landon Thomas, they snatch KJ Bolden away. Now they <laughs> they got more in their sights. But we'll put that one to the side for a minute. But let's stay at a position in need. We're talking edge rusher. Zion Grady, the number 33 ranked overall prospect in the 2025 class. He's, uh, he's from Alabama as well, from Troy, Alabama. Now, Mike, is FSU, are they already in this one? Or do they have work to do? Tailgate season is here, and inside Scoop fans, I need to tell you about these Bird Dog shorts that I've been wearing. Bird Dogs, they were the big winner for me this summer, and I'm rolling right into the fall with them as well. I wear them to work. I wear them golfing. You guys know I brought them on vacation with me to Florida, so they are definitely my first pick for tailgating. Last weekend, I didn't pull up to Lot B with the boys in my old stiff khakis. Nope. I had my Bird Dogs on instead, and I'm glad I did because – it's still hot out there. I know it just became October and it should be fall, but it is swampy out there. Not in my bird dogs because bird dogs have a great cloud knit fabric that looks just like a nice pair of khakis, but way more flexible and way more comfortable. And most importantly, it keeps you cool and dry even for a noon kickoff. So here's what we're going to do. Go to birddogs.com forward slash Josh or enter promo code Josh. For a bird dog tech hat with your order. Yeah, one of these. Fashionable. It fits. It's great. I love to wear it golfing. Anyway, you get one of those free with your order if you type in birddogs.com forward slash Josh or promo code Josh for a bird dog tech hat. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Oh, they're heavily in it. 
Um, in fact, I mean, anytime I reach out to Zion, he's really actively following everything FSU does. He even told me this year, he's like, you know, we know how good George is and, you know, what the consistency is. Like, I think FSU has the best defensive line in the country. He laid out that clearly. He loves what they're doing. Great relationship with Coach JP over there, defensive end position. And then also just they have a lot of coaches that have spent a lot of time. And I always – this is kind of my pet peeve when kids come over for like the Seminole Showcase, which is their big summer event. When they work out, that's a little more significant to me. When kids work out, that's kind of a, a personal connection. Like, hey, I'm invested to what you're doing. And uh, I think he worked out. Um, he's been there several times. And and he, he's really boasted about, you know, just what FSU is doing on the field. That's never going to be easy beating schools like Auburn and Alabama in-state. But mm-hmm. I think FSU has their claws in there and – and I think FSU's been the team that he's most impressed with. When he watches defenses, um, I think he likes kind of what they do uh, from a, a schematic standpoint and just what they do with their ends, the way they rush them and the way they u- utilize them in, in the defense. It think, I think it fits kind of what, what he likes and, and stands out to him. Um, um, so I think they're very high on the, in the picture for him, and he's – obviously going to be there this weekend. So now they can build off that momentum. And I think if any, it's early, but I think if any team has some momentum in that recruitment, it, it would, I would give the edge to FSU with the momentum in that recruitment because of the relationships they've established and just the connection with him. He, they communicate a lot. So I, I think um, certainly FSU's doing their, doing their part and making a move for Zion. Mm. Well, he'll be on campus this weekend. And Florida State fans, they they love those roller coaster ride recruitments for those edge prospects. So this will probably be the next one. Put that name on your radar. Zion Grady out of Troy, Alabama. Yep. All right, let's bring it back to the 2024 class. Last thing I want to know before we get out of here is about KJ Bolden, Florida State's five-star safety commitment, the number one safety in America. He was at Auburn last week, and now he said that he's going to take visits afterwards, but it was a thrilling game against Georgia. Auburn dropped it, but there was a lot of great recruit reaction out of that one. Does Florida State fans have anything to worry about when it comes to K.J. Bolden as it relates to Auburn? I don't think they really have. I mean, I, I'm just – it still could change. Lots can change, but I don't think there's much to be concerned about. I don't think my They'll red radar to hear is that. going off. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. I don't think the main radar is going off. I think, I think with KJ, mm-hmm. um, and he told me this when at his commitment ceremony while I was there, like, hey, I'm going to take visits, but at the same time, when I commit, there's a lot of thought process to what I'm doing, and I think the product on the field has kind of helped solidify that with FSU. <laughs> it's yeah. not no secret that. KJ was at both of the big biggest FSU wins this year. He was at Clemson game when they beat Clemson, and he was also at the LSU game when they kicked off the season and won that game. So I think those things really kind of took away some drama, so to speak, of of just how he feels about FSU and the mm-hmm. direction. So I think he feels very good about FSU. Now, I think he's going to take visits just to, hey, see what it's like and see how he feels, but – I don't think anything's changed his mind as far as the feelings about FSU. I think I think FSU feels confident, and I think people around KJ uh, tell me it, they're they're pretty confident that you know he's he's very sure on on his decision of what he made about FSU. And I think this weekend is really big though, getting him on campus. Even though he's seen already two games, he hasn't been to Doke yet. So just being around you know just other commits and other recruits. Because I said this even to you, Josh, like. Like, we thought before the season started, like, Charles Lester would be the most influential, like, commit that they would get, you know, but then they got K.J. Bolden, and that's a different level of stuff because we do our Friday Night Rewind every week, and, and this dude, I swear, is making, like, he is an immediate impact guy. So to keep him, you want to keep him in the fold because he changes the dynamic of your program because he's a guy I feel like as a freshman you can just put in there He's yeah. going to be explosive playmaker, and I think FSU knows that. And just the national story behind FSU having a guy like KJ Bowen, I think they know how serious it is, and I think they've done a great job of just not bugging him too much, but also just letting him know, like we're thinking about you, we love you that you're in this class, but uh, you know, still working because they know school's going to still keep going after him. You know, the visits might still happen, uh, you know, later in the year. Um, I have my suspicions that he, he officially visits FSU in the Miami game. 
I have my suspicions that if that goes well, I could see him just saying, I'm good. Yeah, I'm done. And it, it gets know, closer uh, and closer I, to I, that I December that. signing day as well. But, you know, just having yeah. him, Charles Lester will be on campus this weekend. Luke Cromanhawk will be on campus this weekend in Tallahassee. So it should be good. Visitor list is up on Warchan as we speak. And all weekend they'll have updates. So you guys be sure to be plugged into Warchan. Michael Langston, thank you for dropping by today on the Inside Scoop. Anytime, buddy. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that content, be sure to subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. We have a new page dedicated only to recruiting. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now.